Due to the ignorance of our host, parental discretion is advised. Welcome back to How Did It Get So Good. My guest today, I've had this guy many times on this studio. He's been here every single event, every single time. His name is Justin Simmons. Yeah. <laughs> he is back. We're going back in time. We're huh? going back in time. The people are probably freaking out. More than this, people are like probably freaking out that you're back. Yeah. Uh, let's not go that far. We're down, freaking right? out that I'm freaking out. Yeah, I'm just, fr- I know. I, I'm happy he's here. This is like you, the three musketeers all you back gotta in understand, the room. When yeah. he like, when he left, he's like, I will never do this again. Really? And then he called me the M word, and now because of you, mm, it was the ass word. Yeah, and now because of you, he's like, I'll do it. So, well, I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate and it. also, I you guys are busy. I appreciate. And it. also, the one and only Eric Iman, back. We're doing it again. Every time he's here, you know why he's here, and that's because he's gonna do it again. One more time. One, One more, more round. round. One more round. Just... Again. <laughs> no. Well, so it's funny, right? Everybody comes up to me and they're like, oh, you're going to. I'm like, this is it. This is the last one. And they're like, well, we've heard that before. I was like, look, I, I was going to say five no, years now. No, 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 right? no. Because I, I retired officially and I never said I was going to quit before that. Mm. And I had the retirement fight. Mm. Then they, they got me to come back out to, to fight Cortez, which didn't work out. I fought Jesse, and then I was like, you know, I'm not going to do the whole thing if it's um, if it's the right thing yeah. in the right time frame. I, I think I got one more in me. So, um, unfortunately, my my good friend Kent uh, lost the belt to to Vandera, mm-hmm. and Zeke lost, and then I'm the only heavyweight active that came off of a win, and I've got some experience i got a little more experience yeah. than those guys and stuff so um mr partridge called me and said do you want to fight for a title and how do you turn that down yeah i think that's the one that gets you out of it right there yeah. <clears throat> if it was just another fight would you have said mm, i'm good uh, yeah probably i mean honestly you know i so i'd been what it had been almost two years mm. that i'd fought before i ended up fighting salmon and um, I'd been in the gym a little bit. I mean, everybody's like, oh, you look like you're in such good shape. L- look, motherfucker, I look good to stand on a beach. <laughs> okay? That's what I'm going Don't for. make me run. <laughs> yeah, like, I look good to stand on a beach. <clears throat> I could do that all day. But, you know, you got to go fight a guy for a half hour. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. different yeah. thing. Did you so. just go on a trip, too, just recently? Uh, I, went to, I, I went to the stockyards. In uh, Fort Worth, actually, I've been there before. Because I was fucking amazing. Was, well, cool. I was, I was talking to him about doing the episode, and then all of a sudden, I see your social media. I was like, "Where is this fucking guy?" Yeah. So I, I had a, a, a Volkswagen work trip. Um. So I just went the like I went the Friday before the the meeting started on Tuesday. So I went the Friday before, and I just stayed at the stockyard mm. until, and I had the best steak I've ever had. In my steak, life. oh, yeah. dude. I, yeah. I tell you so what. So where is this place? Fort it's Worth. in Fort Worth. So Texas? It's, oh, Texas. So it's the original, or well, so at one time it was the largest um, stock exchange, stockyard, mm. like, you know, animals, um, cattle uh, in the West yeah. back in the early 1900s. And then, you know, things change, business changes. So they turned a lot of that place into like, bars and and um restaurants and um trinket shops yeah a bunch yeah. of shops there's the the largest honky tonk in texas is there mm. um and it it's it, it was really cool it honestly it has kind of a, a nashville feel to it because like you go into any of these places and they've got live music going and stuff mm-hmm. like that and you know the cool thing is is it's not just like here in you know, poison. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're playing unskinny bop bop. Yeah. Over and over again. Right. It's not, it's not some <laughs> hairband cover thing all the time. It, it was original music. A lot of yeah. that, you know, so you'd hear some covers, but it was really cool. It was a good time. I got did, a couple. Did you get to see the, the longhorns? You know, the no, I missed it. That's that was the one ass. thing. So mm-hmm. yeah, they, 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 they heard every day. down every day down main street at four o'clock. 
<clears throat> Longhorns is the size of this room. Yeah. Like, you'd shit if you seen them. Yeah, that was the one thing I did miss. Yeah, so, we went down there, what? When was I in Texas? Um, two years ago? A couple ago? years ago. Yeah. And we, we spent a day down there, and I was like, oh, I could kick it down here. I was not dressed to the attire, right? <laughs> but I could kick it down there. It's a really cool experience. There's a picture out there. Yeah. It shows that you were. Oh, yeah. That's right. I have some boots on and the cowboy boots in a pair of shorts. <laughs> so I, I was essentially wearing what I'm wearing, you know, some some skinny jeans and my yeah, chucks. You're, and, you're all fucking and, Jersey uh, Shore, aren't you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I work fucking hard at this. Some, you gotta, you, And you're going to look at it. What do you like? I have to. I got to interview you. Eat. I just got heart. Just got heart. Hey, by the way, we... for me. We were talking. Coming up. Hey, by Coming the way, up. everybody that's seen uh, Simmons for the first time in months, he's been uh, he's been pumping iron. Every day I wake up at 4.30. 4.30, I get my ass to the gym right when they open. Run a half a mile, a mile and a half. <clears throat> and I go work for about 40 minutes. Um, I've been after it, dude. Yeah. I'm obsessed with it now. Yeah. Before, for like a month, I was like, this fucking sucks. Yeah. I got past that point. I tore a bicep. Oh, oh, that's, that's right. Here, bad one. And I had to stop for a little while. It wasn't bad. It no. was it was just a slight Ooh, tear. That's but rough. Like, You've got to stop. And so I just kind of <laughs> ran, worked on the gut a little bit. I didn't give it up. And then when I could start lifting again, I was like, oh, I'm obsessed with it now. Yeah. That It's it's like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy eventually. Because okay. that's what happened to me too, right? Like I was all, I was just lifting, doing a little bit of cardio. and And then it got to where I was like, I feel like if I even stop for a day, I'm going backwards. Like this weird obsession, right? I guess it's not that weird. You know what I mean? I mean, you look at how I've transformed myself over the last, I mean, you guys have seen me over the last 10 years. You know what I mean? But it's, it's a constant thing, like an every (laughs) day, you know what I mean? And I, you know, I post all my obnoxious gym pictures and shit, but I get somebody, I, I probably get two people a week that are like, Hey, you're, you're, your post on your story made me not be a bitch and go to the gym today. Thanks. You know what I I tell myself every day. Joe Rogan said it. He's all, when I wake up and I decide I'm not, I don't want to do this. You have to say to your inner bitch, shut the fuck up and go. And I tell myself that every morning when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm like, this is just fucking stupid. There's nobody up right now. (laughs) And I go, the inner bitch is just fucking being loud. You just got to shut the fuck up and go. And it's even worse when, if you're like super sore Yeah, and, and that's how I feel about every morning. He has, he has said one thing that I was like, oh, that makes total sense. He was like, imagine if your life was a movie and you're, and you're the, you know, you're the lead character. Like you're a, you're supposed to be a hero. Are you gonna save people doing what you're doing? And I'm like, I did say that, didn't I? Probably not. <clears throat> not you, Rogan. Oh, I thought I said that. <laughs> you might have repeated it. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he said something to the effect: you need to be the the superhero in your own damn yeah. movie. And I think to expand, and maybe I don't know if it. I don't know. I heard it somewhere. I'd like to say it was me, but um, you know, you better be the superhero in your own damn movie and save your own goddamn self because nobody's coming yeah, for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody's coming to help you. You better yeah. do it. You know what? A lot of it all stemmed for me was when um, I stepped away from this. Mm-hmm. That's when I really started to go. And I, I got really involved in the kids and doing what they were doing. And Indy, you know, my youngest, yeah. every Tuesday and Thursday, she would put her gi on. She oh, she's a jiu-jitsu. fucking savage. She goes to Muay Thai and she goes to kickboxing and she works her ass off. And I thought, I'm a bitch. If if this eight year old can do it, <laughs> my little girl's tougher than me. <laughs> right. The other one goes and dances and and she just works her ass off. And I thought, kind of worthless. At that, I, at that, at that <laughs> fucking, I feel kind of stupid right now. But um, yeah, yeah, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed watching them grow and it's fuck. It's it's fucking awesome. It's their we, birthday, huh? Uh, it was on Tuesday. She is a. Fi- I am a father of an of a teenager. Officially. It's all downhill. Ugh. That sucks. <clears throat> like That's I was telling Angel, um, so she's having a birthday party with her friend since it's on a weekend. Her friends all came over to the house, and as I was just listening to them talk in the room, I had to go downstairs because I thought I was going to cry because I don't have a baby anymore. She was. She's. She's like. She, the things that she was saying with her friends, I'm like, oh, it's over. It's over. <laughs> She's a grown-up. You know? Yeah. What about your kid? He's a fucking grown-up, ain't he? 
Boy, he's getting big. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I I trained my main. I think he was born big. Yeah, well, yeah. He, <laughs> he, he, he can't. I, I said that fell out of my mom thing on Drake's podcast. I've had a bunch of people like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know. I've been in that a bunch. Leave me alone. Um yeah, he, uh, well, and he's, he's, he's my main, like an, an interesting thing about this particular fight camp is I have heavyweights in the gym with me every day, all of a sudden. Right? I did hear you. I did hear you. Sorry to cut you off. I did hear you say that on, on Dre's podcast. And, and I instantly had that question of, is it really that, that much of a difference when you train, it's when you train with somebody that is your even. size? It's not even the same realm. Like, well, like the Brazilian guys, like Fabio and stuff at 170 pounds, they put a lot of pressure on you, right? Because yeah. they have a whole lifetime of jujitsu and, and, and understanding pressure and, and applying it to you in places like, you know, they'll, they'll put their shoulder up under your rib when you're against the cage and then push you up and all of a sudden you can't breathe, that kind of thing, right? But like Kane, you know, he's my size, almost yeah. identically my size, right? I, I actually am somehow still five pounds heavier than him. But um, same height, same, you know what I mean? It's probably what it is. His, his <laughs> pride drag on the ground. He'll get him. He'll get him. Uh, <laughs> He'll get him. But uh, he, uh, <laughs> he um, you know, when, when you have a, a, a 255-pound guy doing the same essentially the same thing to you it's yeah. not even the same so there's another guy uh mike whom is tall he's about two i think he's about 230 235 right now but he's my height mm -hmm. he's been in there every day kane's been in there almost every day um i've never had so when we're doing like wall drill in particular when they're rotating a fresh guy on you every couple of minutes so that you know you don't get a break and they get four minutes to shark's rest in tank, between. Man. Yeah, the shark tank. Um and and then they have that weight too. It's it's very humbling. Especially as a forty five pound or forty five year old man. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 definitely humbling. So if you had to do one thing for the rest of your life, would it be fighting or would it be commentating? There was a time it would have been fighting and now it's probably Commentating. I, I love commentating. I I, yeah. I I have such a good time. Blake is so good at it, mm -hmm. right? Blake is, and he's the most humble guy, and he's so good at it. He he always, like, messages me and says, hey, thanks, man. I really think you guys kind of carried the show for me. And I'm like, dude, they're, that show wouldn't exist in its format without mm -hmm. you. <laughs> like... You, 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 he puts it all together. He sends me, um, you know, the, the notes. I look through it. Um, I'm, I'm trying to actually do a little bit of prep work these days. So yeah. I'm not just going in there winging it. Um, but I, it's, it's a lot of fun. I really, I, I like Laporte, Jason Laporte a lot. Um, it, it was really great to be able to like the last show at UVU yeah. to, to like call Kent's fight and stuff and Mike's fight. Yeah. And, I oh, mean, I it, it, you were there. I saw you. Saw, yeah. You were dancing. What about this? Oh, good. And I bought a hat. <clears throat> you were dancing. I saw you. Uh, I wasn't. Yeah, I saw you. I saw no, you I do it, bro. I was there. Dude, I want to be that guy. I said it here a couple episodes ago. I want to be that guy that walks into, like, there's always that one guy in every fight that walks in and sits at the tables, and he has, like, horse with him. I want to be that guy. I swear. Every time. I'm like, how does... I'm like... Look at that fucking guy. I, yeah. well, I think by whores it means good looking women. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. I, I classify Maybe, him. maybe if you change your verbiage just a little bit. <laughs> it could be a problem. Right. First step. <laughs> it could be a problem. Ladder, we got to get there, right? But hey, let's, let's, yeah. I want to be surrounded by beautiful women. That's okay. Rewind. Yeah. Recap. Hey, uh, <laughs> what's new with you, dude? Tell me all about it. Um, you know, not well. Other than than tr I've been trying to travel a little bit. I um, I've changed. Well, even so, like even before this fight, I've I've I, I've kind of had a renaissance, like you're having a little bit, right? So um, I talked about it on Dre's podcast, the wreck that I had with Kane, and 
you know, I was, um, I was drinking a lot. I was, I was drinking really hard, um, and, uh, wrecked my bike and had to go through again. All, not, well, this was March last year. Um, so no, I haven't wrecked it since then. No, but I mean, cause we, we knew of one wreck. Remember <clears throat> yes. came in here bleeding. Yes. So you did it again. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I'm not going to say fighting's not for you, <clears throat> but maybe, <laughs> may, just maybe. So I, I I said it in front of my mom or somebody, and I was like, you oh, know, no. it's it's not going to be old age that kills me. Something else will get me. And she's like, oh, my God, what is wrong with you? <laughs> just don't. And I just, I live hard, I guess. I don't I don't know how to do it. But so I wrecked the bike. Um, Go see a doctor, dude. Uh, no, it's not, a, it's not a, really a problem. Well, you live Turns hard. Out. It's like, yeah. Well, I mean, if you're I just surrounded by good-looking women, oh, they yeah, don't mind. No, yeah, I only know. Uh, <laughs> no, I just don't get it because you were explaining what happened. Yeah. I just, I just don't get it to be like the need for speed. I don't. I just. I've. I barely even ride as it is. I've always been that way. Everything's always pedal down. It's my problem. That's why I had to get rid of my bike. Because yeah. I knew that. Because oh, I mean, this doesn't go well. So yeah. So <laughs> you know, I'd I'd been drinking a little little bit, which is part of the problem, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I was going down 12th Street, headed towards the freeway. I was actually taking the bike home, um, and it was early March, and it was kind of dusk. the The sun was coming down. You know, I was probably going 75 miles an hour. Um, and there's a exchange where they put this gas station in and there's a pretty good size bump between the, where it turns from concrete back into asphalt. Mm. Like it's pretty sizable, right? We didn't pay that. And then, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. And then um, a buddy of mine that actually did payment, he's like, well, those exchanges, um, they'll get, water in between them and then it freezes and then it lifts them up yeah so i mean i hit that thing going mock 400 and it ejected me right off the son of a bitch what it is is it's the <clears throat> over and over and over and over and over so you'd imagine it pushes it yeah <clears throat> yeah i could hot, see that cold freeze hot and pushes it and pushes it that's what builds that because i i i uh i've actually because of this, I had to drive down 12th Street twice a day for two months. <laughs> so they always hit the lucky spot. <laughs> Fucking, yeah. But you know what, though, for somebody, for somebody like like me, so or, it pop you up. Yeah, you know, jump like, and so the back tire hit it right. The front mm. tire hit it wasn't a big deal. The back tire hit it, and the bike mm, came up, and yeah. it just shot me right off. And Kane was probably, you know, twenty five feet behind me, and saying same thing right so i hit the ground all this shit i have to deal with i mean driving while i was drinking riding while i was drinking got the whole thing and you know i mean fuck me i had it coming it was my fault right yeah. um so i i really kind of revamped what i what i was what i was doing i mean i i think i was um actually to be completely honest, I was victimizing myself since the divorce. I didn't realize that I was doing it. I was, um, you know, poor me, poor me. And as soon as I got shot off that bike and I hit the ground and slid for probably, I, I slid so long. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to stop. <laughs> like, Jesus cause the, the bike slid from that Maverick all the way to the un under overpass. Holy shit. And then I went from that Maverick and went through the light. So I'm lucky I didn't get hit by somebody else or the, and somehow the bike didn't hit anything else. Neither did Kane's. But I remember sliding and I was on this arm. And fortunately I had my, le my, I had my leathers on and my vest on, but I was just wearing a hoodie and I, I was leaning kind of the, you know, to my left and was like, oh, you remember the road rash you had on that arm? And I went, just <laughs> kind of leaned back onto my back and just rode that some bitch until I stopped. Ugh. And fortunately, I didn't hit my head again. <laughs> um, again, he's like, not on this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I still have that blue scar from the first one. But you know what, though, I feel like <clears throat> for somebody that has been seeing you, because I've known you for years. Yeah, a long time. right. And and. I feel like everything that you go through, whether it's a divorce or now you say you're drinking everything, fighting always gets you back to like, all right, well, Center. fuck that. 
Yeah. Now it's time to get business. Well, do and, business. And um, so maybe you should fight. We're <laughs> we're talking about like some deep psychological shit, but uh, the marriage fell apart when I stopped fighting. Okay. Yeah. I had my face broke. Right. Completely yeah. destroyed my face. Um, Samantha did a lot to make sure that, I mean, cause when, when I had that fracture in my face, they, they had to do a, um, they call it a, a face off reconstruction. Right. So they cut your lip, lift your face up. And then I basically got a plate around both eyes all the way down to my teeth. Well, <clears throat> she had to get all the doctors together, which was the problem. It took, took almost took 10 days and the ER doctor was like, if anything hits you in the face, you're going to die. Like you're, cause it was pushed back and he was, and he's showing us in the CT scans and he's like, see how close is the bone is? Well, that, 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 uh, I don't know that mass behind it. That's his brain. <laughs> Do you beep on metal detectors in? No, but I have seen it. <laughs> Like, depending on which scanner they yeah. have at the airport, I've yeah. seen the one in my arm and the one in my face. Um, yeah, isn't that weird? Because I didn't, when I <clears throat> when I had the plate in my arm, I didn't beep. Really? Yeah, isn't that weird? See, and I, I've, I've only been stopped. I have been stopped a couple of times where they've scanned my arm, but never my face. Um, so anyway, you know. And I, now you're afraid of magnets. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> what if my face gets stuck to something and I can't get up? <clears throat> These are the things that keep me up at night. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just you know, Jared Vander's all one weakness. We need to find it. All, well, it's magnets, right? Yeah, it's big magnets, magnets right? <laughs> Put it on his fucking glove. You're gonna go. <laughs> then he can drag me around. Yo, let me see that cold compress. That's not a magnet, right? <laughs> um. So yeah, I you know I. I'd, uh, I'd stop fighting or I got injured. I thought I was done. I stopped fighting. Uh, I, the marriage went shit. I kind of lost my way. Um, but I, I think it was cause I just felt like I wasn't done. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and this, like me winning this belt will, will put the cap on everything that I wanted to do. Like I never thought I was going to go to the UFC. I knew how old I was when I started. It wasn't like I was, you know, I had some unrealistic dream of making it big or whatever. <clears throat> um, I just, I wanted to win the, be the, the Utah bell. You know what I mean? So you, this is your third time fighting for the bell, right? <clears throat> and the last fist time, twice, right? Still fist twice. And last time, was when I signed those gloves, and that's when my face got fractured. Was the next <laughs> two? So I was in here well, and then, burned those motherfuckers and then for you. Two weeks later, my face was broken. <laughs> it's like you did it, Angel. Um, but yeah, I, so I just I I changed. So when I got in the motorcycle wreck, I was like, I'm being a bitch. I'm being a fucking bitch. You know, I was the most disciplined guy I knew for 10 years almost where, you know, I had all my shit under wraps. I knew what I was eating. I wasn't drinking excessively. I wasn't, you know what I mean? And then I started examining like all the dumb shit that was happening in my personal life. Like I got into an argument with this guy and I've been, or I was drinking, then I got into a fight with this guy or I was drinking, then I got into, an, you know, and I'm like, I was drinking, I was drinking, I was drinking. <laughs> There's a common denominator. Yeah, that's right? what I was gonna say. <laughs> so um, I, I, I haven't quit necessarily, but like, well, I mean, obviously I have for the fight, but right. like, I have two beers a weekend, and but part of it's the gym thing too, right? Because if I if I do, I mean, now if I drink four beers on a Wednesday, I feel like shit on Thursday. That's the problem. I'll drink tonight. <clears throat> when I wake up to the gym and I go to the gym in the morning, I will feel it. Yeah, because I don't think this I'll, this I will was sweat like sweat that shit out. This was like our drinking day, right? When yeah. we did this. Yeah. And are you are you a regular drinker now or not as bad. Yeah. I've realized that you get rid of this. Yeah. And I was like, well I'm drinking the light beer, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't mm -hmm. fucking matter. No, like yeah. it's those empty calories. It's like, it's like <laughs> drinking sugar. Put that away. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
and I, and I've done the same thing. I, I, I have looked at when I, just because there's nothing in the house, I'm like, well, let's go get a fucking, let's go get something fast so I can eat something. Yeah. And I feel it. I never felt it before, but I feel it now. Sugar. Yeah. My bones ache. My joints ache when I eat fucking sugar. Inflammation. It just yeah. fucking drives me crazy. And, uh, Self evaluation, especially when you hit forty, right? You're a new person, dude. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, and I so like when I was fighting, I had my rules, right? Like I was like, I don't, I don't drink like even between fights, like I don't drink during the week at all, right? But I drink, I get fucking plowed on Friday and Saturday night, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, and then, but I, so I really saw that I, I saw this pattern. Okay, so I know this group of people and or i know a lot of people but there's a lot of people that i know that go to the bar every day and that's how they finish their work day right so monday comes around oh it's fucking monday monday sucks i'm gonna go have a beer one beer turns into eight Mm -hmm. they go home then tuesday well now it's tuesday right and i wake up and i feel like shit work go to the bar, have a couple of drinks because I feel like shit. And then all of a sudden it's this self-fulfilling prophecy where you never do anything but go to the bar and drink. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just stopped going to those places altogether. And not like, like my deal was like, okay, Thursday, I'd be like, well, it's Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Yeah, yeah man. You know, I so I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go get dinner and I'm going to have a couple of drinks and those couple of drinks turn into eight. And then Friday I feel shitty and then same thing friday night well you know i'm gonna stop at the bar on my way home and have some drinks and then saturday i wake up and i work out or whatever and i get a few things done around the house and then i'm like well i'm gonna go down and have a couple beers or i'm gonna have a couple beers at the house and then sunday fun day and then all of a sudden monday's there and it's like (laughs) what is wrong with me (laughs) i went through the same shit because i was i was i gained a shit ton of weight probably the biggest i ever been and then i had Rob and his wife, right? And they were talking about, you know, Rob is a life coach and he works out and he does the nutrition and all this stuff. Eastman? Yeah. yeah. Stud. I yep. love Rob. Yep. And uh, and so th- her being related to finances that, you know, she just wrote this book about how, you know, teaching basically finances to like younger kids, but he's also teaching you how to basically get a hold of your finances, right? And so she says one of the things you have to do is, like, go over everything that you spent last month on, like, fast food and, and at the gas station and at the bar and this and that. And then and then see how much you can save from that. Well, I did the same thing. And I was blown away. Blown away. You know how much it was? <clears throat> Just the month of February. Going to the bars, eating out, everything. It was over 800 bucks. Oh, that's not even a drop in what I was spending. <laughs> no, I'm serious. But I, I wasn't drinking. I, m- me as the food. Like, we were talking about this on the on the office, too, because I was able to quit cigarettes, no problem. I was able to quit chewing, no problem. And it's it's the food. Like, I just, for some reason, that's, like, the hardest thing for me. I can't. So, um, I mean, so even, so, okay, so when I was married, we, we, drank like that which i mean recipe for disaster it's not going to survive yeah recipe right? for disaster but as a single guy now you know what I, I i was so say i'd go my thursday night i go get dinner and have some beers it would be 40 50 bucks right mm-hmm. and then friday i'd go and then everybody'd be down there or down wherever i'm at and then all of a sudden it's 100 125 bucks and i'm buying shots and i'm buying food and i'm buying drinks and you got to be the guy that tips well too and i and yeah. I, you know i I'm, <laughs> I i do tip pretty decent i think <laughs> and then saturday i do the same thing so then when i cut all that out my bank accounts just you know. so the other thing I did is is I really I actually really got back into cooking. I remember last time I was here you were, you were like, "Man, I really like to cook." And I used to love to cook, right? And now all of a sudden I'm making, you know, about 75% of what I eat I make at my house. And even with this bullshit inflation, um I'd still like I mean, I I'm saving 2 or 300 dollars a week over what I was probably spending going out all the time, right? Um, I, I 
pretty much stop dating altogether too because oh wow yeah that's expensive yeah you lose weight there too yeah (laughs) (laughs) i don't have to carry her around (laughs) no but you know what it's funny you say that because i'm in the same boat right and if if you're not necessarily with somebody you're not going out at least me i'm not going out as much because you don't have for lack of better words I don't have to entertain you somebody. You don't have to impress them. Yeah. yeah, so I don't have to entertain. I don't have to be like, hey, you know, let's not be like stagnant. You want to just go out. You want, And where do you go out? You either go to the bar or you go eat. Right. That's that's a regular day. You know, and, and the other thing, so God bless Ogden, right? That's five bars. <laughs> so and you're they going, know you in every single shout one Shout out to 25th Street. <laughs> yeah, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> five bars you go down it's the same people talking mm-hmm. you know yeah. what i mean in the same thing talking about the same stuff they're not god bless them <laughs> uh, but we're not talking about like what i'm working for on my next promotion what i'm you know what i mean and like i said on dre's podcast i, I run a 10 million dollar a year business right yeah. no, you know we talk about me, me fighting my silly ass shit i do in my personal life but i manage a really big business i have 40 employees right yeah. so um <laughs> pretty good size but um <laughs> 40 he says 40 <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm responsible for these people and their yeah, paychecks too. Right. Absolutely. And I take a lot of pride in that. And I, and I take a lot of pride that my employees and, and the people that work for me make, have made consistently more money every year. It's hard to that be that type of thing. It's hard to be that guy when you, <clears throat> when you realize you start managing people. Um, and I've, I've, I've learned this over the last five years of really managing a, uh, a large amount of people that it's hard to be that guy that will stand on the end of a cliff, jump off and everybody will follow you when you are not taking care of yourself. When you're, when you're fooling when you're yourself, basket case. Yeah, when you're yeah. fooling yourself, people smell that shit a mile yeah. away. Right. Well, and the difference between a, a boss and a leader. Yep. Right? I just talked to my boss about this last week, you know, what we talked about some of the, the, the differences and things like that. But, you know, I just like, rather than, than go to downtown Ogden to the same places I've hung out my whole life and do that kind of thing, I would rather come down here and have dinner somewhere I don't eat or haven't eaten a million times. You know what I mean? Well, e- and even, just a change of scenery and a di- you know what I'm saying? Even the, even the conversation at the bar you go to everything when everybody talks about what's wrong with everything instead of talking about what could be right with everything or what they're doing difference. to improve their a- situation, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Because you're right when you go to a bar, it's it's that, right? You you're right the same people talking about the same <clears throat> bullshit and everybody lives in this bubble. And that's their life. And some people are completely content with just living just like that. But it's, it's, uh, it's not a healthy lifestyle. No. And it's, you know, it's for body and mind. Right. And, and, you know, it starts here. Yeah. Right. And I get people all the time and people that aren't at the bar, people at work tell me all the time, you know, oh, I wish I could be, I wish I could do what you're doing. Well, you can, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all have the same 24. You might have some different, obstacles and i have i mean granted you know i don't have young kids or anything anymore yeah. but it, it, granted you're not built like a greek god like <laughs> i am but but i mean, <laughs> I mean you. You, haven't, you haven't seen your dick in seven years <laughs> Follow you but, i'll be mad at your parents yeah, right but <laughs> that shitty genetics but i met you doughy <laughs> you really hey you gotta take that in consideration right yeah but you know why it's, it's well speaking of that because back at, you know back when uh Back when it comes to knowing you for so long, back when we, when I started watching you, and I don't mean to disrespect, like you were, you were, like you were working out and fighting, but you were doughy, like you were bigger. Oh yeah. And nowadays, I see you, and I'm like, oh holy shit! Like I'm like, that guy's putting some fucking work. So, and when you think about it, right, we're talking about a, a what essentially a, a twelve year span that I've been fighting. Like actively fighting, right? I, I had five amateur Muay Thai fights in California, but I was when I started fighting, I was three hundred and ten pounds, and Jesus. I was probably thirty thirty five percent body fat at the time, right? So it's taken all that time 
to shed weight, figure out diet, know what I can and can't get away with meal wise, how much cardio I need, how much lifting I need to do and to put enough muscle on to where now it's not that it's, I shouldn't say it's not that hard because I still go to the gym every day and then I'm fighting and I'm going twice a day. Right. But it's, so maybe mentally it's gotten easier because now it's my routine, right? Instead of me being like, Oh fuck, what the fuck am I doing at, you know, (laughs) quarter to five in the morning packing my gym bag or whatever. But I've also put on enough muscle that it consumes more. You know what I mean? And, and, and now I found some balance, but it took me, 15 years just <laughs> like i know exactly what you mean bro. what's uh <laughs> what's uh when eric wakes up what is uh what's eric's day and what is your meal intake like um i mean i i, I, was I look at, I, I look at you and i go oh, that's what i want to look like one day and and I, and I know your work ethic and i know the work that you've put into it but i also know that you don't cut corners no so, so i always wonder what eric's what's he intaking so because I know you're not stopping at McDonald's to grab seven fucking double quarter pounds. No, right? no, no. So I, I was so, gonna ask it too. Like, how so many times I've, do you eat? For, well, for one, <clears throat> if I drink, it's literally two beers on a yeah. weekend, the whole weekend. It's you know what I mean. It's not like I I crack beers on Friday and I'm going to you know I so I took <clears throat> myself out of that environment, which changed that, which changed almost everything right. in a lot of ways, right? right. So I get up in the morning, I go to the gym, I go fasted. Do you eat anything? I don't not, eat anything either. Not prior to the Before. gym. I cannot eat. So when I wake up, I wake up, I get ready, I take a pre-workout, and then I do some l Arginine? Yep. Um, just because it gives me that that uh, that uh, full feeling when I'm lifting, but I don't eat but shit. Do, but during the day, you eat a shit ton of times, So right? that's the thing. A lot of people are like, how the fuck can you do that? Ooh, sorry. If I tried to eat before I went to the gym, it would make me sick. It makes me sick. Sorry. And I have to be careful what I eat for lunch because I work out so hard at lunch. Oh, because you work in the afternoon too. Yeah. So like right now, so the other day I had some somebody like we had a um, a lunch that work provided and I ate some tacos and I ate like four of these decent sized tacos. Right. And, um, I, I go to the gym and I, I get, you know, I get to my fifth or sixth round of the shark tank and I burp <laughs> and it is fucking <clears throat> Sewage. <laughs> smell, hey, you know, it probably smelled like you and all those whores at the table. <laughs> like, and so I get the you egg know, burps, dude. I fucking hate them. It's it's foul, and then I get like, I get this kind of acid reflux feeling, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, hold on a second. Like, you don't want. I'm I'm not gonna fucking throw up on you because he's trying to take me down right, and I'm in, you know, I'm I'm against the cage, and I'm like, hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so, I mean, to your point, I have to, you know, I have to pay attention to that yeah. because it, it it affects a lot more than that. So, so, you, so you go to the gym. I go to the gym. Um, I usually, well, I, I get 20 minutes. Usually I do sprints. So I'll walk three minutes. Um, I'll sprint, you know, 30 on, 20 off until, a, and then I walk the last three minutes to cool off. I lift, me and Kane lift. Um, we lift at a... Uh, pace. <laughs> so you hit it hard. Hard. Right. And I've had so a are couple. You, are you working two muscles? Are you working one muscle when you're one. doing it? Just, I just one. do one. That's um, what I've learned. I can't do the two. If I do one, I feel like I get a better. What does that mean? You go focus on something? So if I, uh, when I first started, I would do buys and tries. Yeah. Where I would do chest and tries. So I do, I do buys and tries. I do arms as a day. Right. But like it's either chest, shoulders, back, legs. And then arms. So it's five days and then start over. So you, you get out of the gym. What's the first thing you eat? I I go to work. I drink coffee. I drink black coffee. Well, I'm, I splurge a little bit. I put sugar-free creamer in it these days because I'm That's getting a little gay. soft. That's kind of yeah, good. getting a little well, soft. Well, he gets his toenails painted. I know, but I'm, I'm going to go get him painted right ah, for this Disgusting, fire. dude. Anyway. Well, I'm going to put him in your mouth. So you have... Uh, so, <laughs> so, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is episode whatever the fuck it is. At this podcast, I have no fucking clue what it is. Um... <laughs>
<laughs> my God. So, so you work out and you don't immediately go to a protein? No. Really? No, I don't. I don't consume anything until ten o'clock. Wow. I don't. I don't. And which is funny because it used to be noon. I didn't eat a meal until noon. I drank three cups of black coffee and water um, until noon. And um, and what I've noticed, especially since I put on some the muscle that I put on and stuff, it's hard for me now to get to ten. Where it was, it used to be not that bad to get. But I, I, I didn't always work out this way. I feel like I am gonna die if I don't eat something okay. once I leave the gym. So my body um, hurts so bad that it needs food. If maybe twice a week, like if I do legs, they take so much out of me. I'll get super hungry around eight thirty, and I've, <laughs> I've been drinking those Fairlife protein yeah. shakes. They're mm. really good. Yeah. They're delicious. really good. They're delicious. They're really good. So I'll drink one of those. That's the forty twos or the twenty sixes. The twenty sixes because they're the ones. My guy now. Because they're the ones I can find. <laughs> I've had a couple of forty twos, but you got to buy them individually, and they're yeah. twice as much yeah, money. It doesn't make sense funny. to me. Um, the other thing I I. <laughs> I eat a lot of, um, like I'll, I'll take onion, uh, pepperoncinis, cucumbers, stuff like that. And I'll put it in olive and vinegar, so- soak it and I'll eat that at 10. And then I'll try to, um, take protein. If I haven't drank a protein shake before that, I'll drink that at 10. And then at noon I have lunch. Um, I'm not super, super strict. Primarily I, what I will say is, if I stick to like a three quarters of a cup of rice, rice and those rice in a bag. Oh, they're outstanding. Throw it in the microwave. Save your life. Oh, yeah, dude. <clears throat> I know it's probably sacrilege. I do a rice in a it's bag. What? Sacrilege. No, I mean, no, he mm-hmm. has this Ri- thing. He rice does this in a bag thing. and black beans. Yeah. That's my go-to. He has, what's that thing that you eat on the, on, in the mornings? I Do you throw an egg in there? So like, it smells uh, so fucking good. I'll do, I do a, pro, do a protein shake, but I do, Protein, and then I do I do whole milk because the milk doesn't bother me. I'm trying to get the trying to get the protein out of that. I do a half a cup of raw oats and about four tablespoons of peanut butter with a banana. So it's a full fucking meal. That's pretty. It's, yeah. it's, it's and that carries me over to about where I get to ten o'clock. Yeah, that's I the have, one I'm talking about. I have diced um, diced uh, potatoes. Some uh, onions and some peppers with two eggs. I'll throw that in and eat that real quick, um, and then then I go to lunch. Then yeah. lunch is usually rice, black beans, and then a steak. I feel like I I feel Jimmy better. Jones. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> yes, it was. They fed us at work, so same thing. <laughs> I had this big thing of bread, and I went, "Fuck, man, I'm gonna pay for this, right?" <laughs> but steak, I I I like chicken, but I feel better when I eat the steak. Arnold said the same thing though. I can't. I, the chicken's <clears throat> tough for me to do. Man. Really? I really enjoy the, the I, red meat more than the than the and and he, Rogan said it the same. It's like uh, the red meat is supposed to be a lot better for you when you're building muscle. Oh, for sure. I think yeah. so, for sure. But I know it's harder to digest. I take a digestive enzyme, and I think that's why I get so fucking hungry because it's just. Whoa. Maybe. Yeah. So if if I stick to like three quarters of a cup of rice and and. I probably eat anywhere from six to eight ounces of protein, um, and that's lunch. And then I I will I'll actually s- typically snack on some kind of carb around between two and three. Just get a little bit more energy to go to link because that's you know no matter how hard I work out in the morning, fuck me, it ain't that hard as it is at night. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you know I'm at link from usually five to seven. And then I go home. So what what I what I really make sure I do is whatever I eat for dinner, I eat for lunch the next day. Mm. So I, I just prep it. Make right? enough to just prep. Oh. And then I'm not eating. And I've done it both ways where I've done like all my meal prep on Sunday. But my routine is. But I mean, I don't eat dinner until eight o'clock. That's what I can't do because I can't <clears throat> I can't go to bed in my body trying to digest it or it keeps me up because when I eat food it wakes me the fuck up. So if I don't eat late now, it wakes me up because I get hungry. Yeah. Like like you know on on Saturday if I eat dinner at six, <laughs> I'm 
awake at three starving. (laughs) So it just, you know, and, and, but of course, like anything, your body starts to balance it out and it figures it out. But I guess it's a big difference between you and me where you were not trying to put on size. You're just trying to maintain. I I want to, I want to see my abs. Okay. hundred percent of the time. I want to see my abs. We do too. Do you want to see them right now? And me, I'm just trying to put, you're trying to put size. I have never, ever, ever. And I mean, obviously I have a very high metabolism. I'm skinny and beat down my whole life for it. Um, my metabolism is starting to slow down. Having Crohn's disease has always been a fucking issue, but I haven't had problems for years with it now to where I can eat and eat and eat and eat. And as long as I go to the gym, I don't look fat. I don't feel fat. I was at like, when I started working out, I got one of those badass uh, um, scales that tells you your body fat and everything. And when I started, I was at 26% body fat, which for a guy that only weighs 140 pounds is is quite a bit, right? I'm down to 17 now. That's good. See, I would guess, I I haven't been on one, and I'm weird about doing it at the gym, but I would guess I'm probably around 12. God damn. Makes my dick hard just hearing that. You're welcome. Yeah, we can hear it too. <laughs> that was the creep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm just super going. Share. I'm sorry. Do what I have you been doing? That one? We've been talking about me and him. What have you been doing? Uh, nothing. Just, just this show. Just this. Just this. You've just been putting out a happen. lot of content. <clears throat> I've been actually talking to people that I'm really excited about. Not tonight, but uh, before. Yeah. <laughs> Glad I, I'm, glad I, I'm, hey, I'm glad I came out of my way to come here. Check. It's something I said I wasn't ready to do. <laughs> we gave uh, you like easy there, Will Wonder, up, didn't we? No, uh, just just working, just uh, just it's having. Ramping up. Ta- yeah, it's just right now we're. Oh we're, yeah, we're, you we're guys are in the take go off. season, right? It's ramping up right now, and it's been another. It's been like last year, except it hasn't been like last year. Remember last year, we had snow on the ground, yeah. right, forever, and we couldn't get going. But now we've had decent weather, but it's been very odd. And it hasn't just been us. It's been an industry problem yeah. that nobody can get going right now for whatever reason. And so we got people that are seasonal. We had snow last week, right? There's yeah. seasonal, seasonal employees that are just fucking foaming at the dick to get working and we're just like hey another we week another week another week and you can only tell people that for so long right yeah. it's it's just no yeah. and then you have then you have production issues because you don't have employees and-, and it's weird because we have so many people just banging on the door that want to come work for us and yeah. i would love to hire every single one of them but we're just not ready i i'm in a I'm in an interesting spot too, where I seem like nobody can hire a technician, right? Yeah. They're so hard to find, find a qualified technician. And I'm in a spot where I get a, a pretty qualified guy that comes and applies once a month. And, um, we slowed down for the first time in years, mm-hmm. right? All of a sudden we were like, like we're, we're not scheduled a week out. We're scheduling today or tomorrow. You know what I mean? I'll take your car in today if you call before three. Um, and then, of course, I um, I I lost a, a technician that was good. You know, he moved on to, to doing something. I hope's better for him. And I know that it'll be better for me. And then as soon as that happens, we get busy again, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I also have a, a technician in every stall. And um, I'm just about out of room so you now think, you got to start looking at what each person is doing and what they're producing do you think the slow time right now is because the vw diesel motor warranty is finally up in 2024 <laughs> <laughs> they're not all the up yet <laughs> we're getting there now. though right we are getting there we are getting you there. Should see um, our, hey i dealt with that you should, you should yeah. see our new trucks dude <clears throat> yeah yeah <sighs> Anyway, you I, have miss, a good luck? I miss my Audi. Well, yeah, you miss your I miss Audi. miss my Audi. Because nothing I do. is like driving Well, because it got 50 fucking miles per gallon. Right. Right. Well, that helps too. But, uh, no, we got uh, we got brand new, brand new, brand new Ford Rangers. Mine's got mm. 86 miles on it. How do you feel about it? You know what? We went from three-quarter ton diesel Chevys. 
that was if, if nothing rides like a fucking Chevy. Yeah. It's the fucking best riding vehicle out there, if you ask Made me. In I've, America. I've had all of them. I've had the Fords. I've had the Dodges. I've had the Chevys because we get them every couple of months, and I get to drive all the newest ones. Nothing drives like Even a the electrical Chevy. ones. But um, they were, were going green. You know, they made me drive an electrical truck for a while, which was a fucking disaster. It was the fastest thing <clears throat> I've ever been in. Holy shit. But uh, um, they're tricked out, but they are very small. It's like a Tacoma. Right. But it's a cool little truck. Yeah. I'm not going to bitch about it. It's, it's, it's a no, 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 it's ride. not. But it's just, it's, it's just the fact that we, we went from having all the space, but we don't need it. Right, but now we're like today we got we got invited to that lunch that he was talking about, and there's four of us in our team, so we're like we have to drive. Well, we have to drive two trucks because yeah. there's no space for everybody. Right. Like me, and I'm not that much taller than him, but like obviously I'm like stressed out. You know, not all the way, but a, a, you know, fair amount. And then I look in you know, my back seat and it's like there's no space. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that that S4 I have is it, it's a. It's a four door, but it might. It's like uh, it's basically a, a two seater. With well, a it's you. Seat. I mean, the passenger you can put somebody in the back and right. they can lay down, right? Yeah. But for you, yeah. they've removed the front seat. It's yeah. It's it's when I'm back, it's little bitty back. Do you go there. any farther back? Or are you all the way back? No, actually, that car has the most legroom any really? car I've ever driven. Wow. I, it's it's the first car that I've owned that I don't have to have the seat all you, the way. You back. would know this. Let me ask you this because I know you would know this. Obviously, I am rock hard. I'm going to have a Porsche. Hell yeah. I'm going to have a Porsche. That is that is the dream car. That is my goal. Everybody's got that. That's yeah. my goal, right? Um, I hear that if you're a tall guy, the Porsche is the exotic to buy. It is. Because they actually have, the obviously, a, a 911's got a back seat in it, right? But I hear that any tall guy fits in a Porsche. The shop so fits I, in there. I, I drove a 911, um, and it was... GT3 like a, RS? No. <laughs> Ooh, no. does that make your dick hard too? Yeah. I, you know, what's funny is, you know, growing up, you always had your car on the, the wall, right? And like a lot of guys have Mine Mustang or Lamborghini. Mine, that, mine was too. Mine was too. I wanted we probably a Porsche. Had, we probably had the same poster. It yeah. had the mirror floor on it. Yeah. It had the lightning in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a Porsche. That I did Davis not. County <laughs> shit right there, baby. <laughs> I didn't want a Lamborghini or any. Fuck I wanted no. a Porsche. See, that I was, always see, wanted a growing Porsche. up. That was my shit, dude. Lamborghinis. I had the see? posters. I had the scale cars. I had. The, it was just. But uh, I hear a tall guy can't fit in a Lamborghini. Um, they can't fit in a Ferrari. So I've the the R eight, um, the V ten R eight is essentially the same, pretty much the same layout as the Hurricane. I wouldn't drive one. It's too too tight. Yeah. I, like I can get in it and drive it, but I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but phenomenal car phenomenal oh, absolutely. Car. you know what i would probably buy honestly i would buy an rs7 really big body car really yeah big body car four door right mm -hmm. fast as hell yeah, they're pretty fucking fast and uh oh. light light tune mm. 800 horse yo how bad are the uh the e-tron the audi e-trons so we, um, Jesus Christ. My, my stomach. They're coming through. I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Tacos. That's racist, motherfucker. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, when, when Ken Block signed with Audi, we lucked out and got his, uh, RSGT e tron. Um, so I actually got to drive it before we delivered it. it. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, the one that they did in the hood again. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I drove. So when we PDI would it, me and my shop foreman jumped in it and we drove it. <clears throat> um, and I'm in the car and at first Justin's driving it, my, my shop foreman and we go over the bridge and it's a little bit wet, like just, just like a just dusting of, of rain. Right. Not like it was pouring or anything. And we go around, you know, and we're coming back and I'm like, God, why am I so uncomfortable in this car? Like, you know, it's got room. It's similar size to the RS7, just maybe a little bit shorter or whatever. But I'm like, God, why? I don't understand what is making me so uncomfortable in this car. The car is so fast that I was holding my breath. <laughs> They're that fast. Yes. Huh? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. It is like being in a roller coaster. And so my, my boss at the time, he had just a GT Tron, not the R and it was his car. When I realized at first I was like, why this thing sucks. I hate this car. Right. (laughs) And then that's when I realized I was like, I'm holding my breath when Mm. he's accelerating. Like it is fast. They're sick, dude. It is fast. It is fast. I saw my I ate in person at the Dodge dealership. I was like, oh. I'm I'm in the verge of getting rid of my truck. Oh yeah? yeah Do you need we'll a truck see. still? No. Yeah. I've told him this. I've I have been but, I've been <clears throat> the cheerleader in the back. I have yeah, this motherfucker's <clears throat> like, let's go right now. <laughs> yeah. But I've asked you, I'm like no, yeah. I, since you've bought that one ton mega, mega cab, have you have you ever used it? To its capabilities, like I have to have a one ton for this. No, 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 no. I no. I've said it before. I, I don't. I don't need it that big. Although I am kind of in the midst of buying a home, so I know it's gonna, oh, yeah. yeah so I know you. it's going to help me to get my shit moved. But after that, no, not really. And we're we're at the point now that we're getting like a little mechanical problem. So it's like how many miles on it now? I got one hundred fifteen thousand. Yeah. Usually about Don't then. even talk to me about. <clears throat> I have the same truck, and yeah, I right. just went through the whole front end. Oh yeah, the whole front end, and you know a Dodge. Mm-hmm. It's just a disaster. It's the biggest weak point. And, uh, I didn't even get all of it done, and it was three grand. <laughs> I'm blown away at how much things cost now. Oh, like even I need in tires. The, My even tires are like three grand. So Kane's got, um, you know, Kane's got a pretty nice older. Uh, um, Duramax and he just put tires on his and he shopped everywhere for it and did his own thing. He did it all himself. You know, he didn't, he was like, dad, find me a deal on tires or pay for him. He did it, the whole thing himself. But I think he spent $2,200 on tires. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when you could go to the tire shop for your car and you were like, you were pissed because you're all, oh, God damn, 350 yeah. bucks. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even buy one tire. I think I missed that. I missed that. <laughs> well, you can't even get a 16-inch tire for, you know, a set nope. of 16-inch tires now is $700. Yep. It's, it's, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm that old man where I'm like, man, how are these kids going to survive? You know what I mean? It is. No, it's true. It's true. Are you going to get another bike? I have another bike. Bought one already. <laughs> made it made it two months. <laughs> <laughs> I So I was like, so I, okay, yeah, so we'll reel it back, right? So I, I fall off that bike. I go through all the <laughs> shit that comes with uh, um, drinking on a bike, right? Mm-hmm. Get the whole thing. Um, Did you get a Dewey? I got impaired. Oh, I was that's impaired. Right. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> but I mean, you know, fortunately, I didn't kill myself or others. Yeah. Um, I had to drive down to as part of. I kept my license and everything, of course, because I had to because my job. But um, well, I didn't have to. They could have taken it. But so to keep my license, I agreed to do. They call it a twenty four seven program. Mm. Which is why I had to drive down to, <laughs> I had to drive down to uh, Weaver County Jail twice a day and blow in a breathalyzer. <clears throat> Damn. So hey, at least they didn't put one in your car, right? Because I mean, I I get I just had one in last week that the car wouldn't start, and you know, well the car's under warranty. Yeah, somebody fucked that up when they put it in your car, and your car won't start because your breathalyzer mm. fucked up. Damn. So. Um, I had to go down to Weber County between what was it five and eight in the morning, and then the same at night between five and eight at night, and blowing a breathalyzer showed that I was not drinking. And so they they'll do a um, ankle monitor that somehow knows if you're drinking, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, you. Know, it, it obviously would be a lot easier. So for two months in the, like, you know, March and then, um, went to court in April. So, you know, April, May, and most of June was doing that. Um, and I was like, I'm not going to make this easier on myself. 
<laughs> I need I need to feel this. But you know, the good thing is is and the I mean if if you've if you've watched me over the years, I only learn how to do things the hard fucking way. Um, you know, there's there's the easy way, the hard way, and then the way I'm the do Ivan it, way, which is, <laughs> which is just completely unreasonable to learn anything. <laughs> so um, I I just. I was like, I'm not going to make this easy. I'm going to make sure I, I feel it. And um, I quit. I actually quit drinking for quite a, quite a while past it even um, altogether. And um, I realized that I was feeling sorry for myself. That's what it came down to. I was feeling sorry for myself. I was trying to find, you know, everything I was, I was being a victim. And that it was, it was when I, when I finally wrapped my mind around it, it was like, like that, that pure self hatred of being like, I have never been this person. I came from a fucking rough childhood. I, you know, I have never lived easy. I, I had through my childhood and then my own choices right after that, I made my life really hard on myself um, I've never been this person, never. And I was so mad that I didn't like, that I didn't see it. You know what I mean? And, and I was like, how, how could you be so stupid? And I realized that then I, then I reevaluated, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about gratitude and things like that. And I, I, I had to like, look at my life, right? I have the job I always wanted. My best friend is my kid and lives with me and, and we, we go to the gym every day. You know, I got my guy, he, you know, he's my guy. You know what I mean? Um, I, I shed off a couple of friends that I had that I thought were that well, that I know that were just, you know, not helping the situation through their own habits. Um, just, just really, re- yeah, just, well, just, you know, it's, it's easy to be like, we'll have a beer, have a shot, have a, this, have a, that come over and have dinner and then we're going to drink. And then, you know what I mean? And, and I, I, I kept it pretty, like I said, I kept it pretty clear. Why like you I haven't could, called me in like, yeah, there yeah, you I haven't talked to you since your last shit. fight, actually. <laughs> now that I think about it, I'm like, no, because yeah, I messaged you and whatever. I was like, hey, are you watching the fights? Whatever. And we were supposed to get together and then nothing. Yeah. Fuck you, Eric. You're a piece of shit. Thank you so much for hanging out with the. <laughs> I just have a, I just had a self realization right here. I'm that guy. <laughs> Eric is like, listen, Justin, you might be working out. You're still fat. <laughs> I'll still fuck you up. <laughs> how about how about we go to dinner one time? Ooh, just okay. call me. Okay. What about you? you I'm good. You guys can do. Oh. You guys can hang out. He'll okay. be at the bar. Yeah. Okay. I get Talking it. about what's wrong with this world. <laughs> With the, with the bitching horse. about the uh, bitching about the econ- economy. Of, shout out to fucking bar name Sue. Fucking hell uh, yeah, twenty like- twenty eighty fucking whatever <laughs> South, South State. <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking just shout out to that guy that's always there or whatever too. <laughs> <laughs> you know he told me that shit yesterday was, or, or today. He's like, you know what? Eric used to talk to me like often, and then he was like, hey, you know who else? The fucking guy Dre. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, fuck nobody dude. calls me anymore. I left this. Well, okay, so I saw like I wrecked my motorcycle. <laughs> I, I just I I I put the stamp on my life every time I lay a bike down. Something's wrong. It's a motherfucker. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost killed myself. Um but it's the same thing for me, right? I stopped going to the, the same places doing the same yeah. things and I don't hear from anybody anymore. Yeah. Same thing. And and like I got some friends that I, you know, I just like, you know, some pretty close friends that I talk to every few weeks or something, but I just, I'm really fairly isolated right now. Um, and it's weird cause I, I think I always thought of myself as being like this loner kind of thing. And then I looked at it and I'm like, no, you're not. You're the you were fucking everybody. Worst. You were the life of the party. Yeah. So my, so I, I'd been going to therapy for two years. Right. And the, the, I, I'd switched and moved around therapists and went to this lady that is very, um, she hot, very accountable. That's not what he asked. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> Continue. You can take that as Continue. you will. You can take Continue. that as a yes or no. Continue. 
continue. Um, but she, she really holds you accountable. Right. And there was, I was doing something and I was like, you know, I, I kind of want to go to Vegas. And she's like, so go. I was like, well, I don't want to go by myself. And she's like, that's the problem. You're never going to do anything. Ooh. You're never going to do anything. You're never going to see anything. You're never going to do anything you want to do if you're waiting for people to do it with you because you're not in the same, you're not in the same place in life as most people at your age, right? Most people are still raising kids, doing that kind of thing. And you know I was, what I mean? was just talking about this on that lunch we went and we, we just hired a new guy for, for our team and, he was asking me about like what do I do and stuff, and it's like it's hard for me to find people my age that don't have kids. Right. Like even when I want to do something, I'm like, yo, let's hang out. And I call somebody. It's well, I have my kids. I'm like, okay, so hey, you hang out. So will you talk to the wife? And so it's like it's hard for me to hang out with someone that I really want to because I'm <laughs> I'm a <laughs> social butterfly. So I would I would just hang out with friends because he asked me. He's like, what do you do for fun? And I said, I'll be honest with you. As long as I'm hanging out with friends, I'm good. But it's not like. I, I don't have that pressure to be like, hey, let's go out and be like, all right. I have two good friends. One of them, I know that if I ask him to go out, to go and hang out, it's, it's going to be all on my, on my wall. Oh, yeah. So it's like, all right, I love you, but like, not that much. And it's, <clears throat> and it's that. And, and obviously like when which we do the UFCs, right? We, we go to the bar and we hang out. And that's a, that's a good thing for me to do. But the guy that's always there, he's getting paid to be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. there's a difference. Cause I always ask, I used to ask everybody, Hey, we're going to, we're going to watch the fights. We're going to watch the fight. I used to check in with everybody. You know, we're going to, you know, fights are coming fights Saturday. And then that's after that, I'm like, I'm done. Too. I'm done asking. I'm like, fuck that's everybody. How I was too. I, if you show up good, if not, it's whatever. I, um, so she tells me like, you, like you just, go go i so the for the first time probably in my whole life i went to vegas by myself you just got in the car and went just got in the car and went got a got a room at the circa um nice room i went down there i got there on a friday i ate a big meal um i had one beer and i went to bed <laughs> and slept for like 10 hours <laughs> See, I, I, I couldn't do that. And then got up the next day. My whole thing was, I, the reason I stayed at the circus, because the pool's heated. Mm -hmm. And it was beginning of February. I went and sat down by the pool. Um, I got done there. Went up, got dressed. I took myself to a really nice dinner. Fucked all those chicks you met at the pool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe you, should, maybe you should let me know right? next time you do a sex right? cabay like that. Right? No, he's not looking to go with people, remember? That's what his therapist said. No, but... He's not well, leaving on people, right? I'll, so I'll meet him there. He's doing this for his head. I'll right? meet him there. For his anyway, head. anyway. He's after, doing this for his... After the 16-hour sex to pay, right? <laughs> he's, doing right? This, he's doing this for his plate, okay? Right? Right? <laughs> um, yeah, so she, she... That's basically what she told me. She's like, you, you don't... You have this entourage around you all the time, and it's your fault. So did you have a good time? I had a great time. How crazy is that? I had a great that time. When you finally let go of the thing that's always holding you back and you try something, so you're like, oh. I just, so last weekend, I just went up to Park City. I got my workout done on Friday. I went up to Park City. I went by myself. What? I almost said a terrible joke. I sat in the hot tub. I just did some recovery stuff. On, like, I got up. I got my run in. I lifted a little bit. I just did recovery. Did nothing. Did nothing. I, I got this um, steam shower. So every time I left the hotel and came back, I'd get in the steam shower. Just trying to recover because recovery's harder. Hey, see, so here's the difference, though. A guy like you and me, go do that. Go down to Vegas. Go down to Park City. Like, eat a good meal. Have a beer. Go to bed. Go get in the pool. Hang out by the pool. They're like, well, they got the eye candy down there in the hotel. Yeah. They're like, well, this is what we have. We get called because we look like fucking pedophiles yeah. hanging out by our fucking exactly. self. Exactly. Out there just fucking standing there exactly. staring at everybody like a fucking gimp. You got to understand, dude, in our building that we work with, that we work at, we're in a corner all by ourselves. A reason. There's a reason we put us, they put us in the shed. <laughs> everybody else is like, all the departments are like together. There's girls. Like, it's just, it's just, just both of us right in the corner. What do they, what do they say? My office doesn't even have a window. <laughs> and like, we're not going to show this motherfucker. What do they say? The level of sexual harassment depends on how good looking you are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. There is, I think there is some truth to that. I, <laughs> uh, you know, hey, 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 what's up, girl? You know, like that. And you you do that in some settings. She's all, yeah, she yeah, fucking yeah, misses yeah. you. Like, you don't even say anything rude. You're like, hey, just, how are you? You know, you're cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh, ah! 
What is if you look good though? It's like, oh, how are you? Okay, so Eric's out of the pool. Eric's just out by himself. You see a a good looking girl. You're looking at her. She looks at you, right? The common like uh, every day where she sees you looking at her, right? What is Eric's pickup line? <laughs> what is Eric's I, pickup line? Because I know you got one in the belt. <laughs> I, I I'm pretty organic with it. Like, okay. um, <laughs> I I said one to somebody. What was it? What the hell was I'm it? Like, if we were both squirrels, can I put my nuts in your hole? <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> did you fall? It be <laughs> did it hurt? Did it, she's all what? When you fell from heaven, did it hurt? I, is that um, what you said? <laughs> Okay, so no, I've, so. Been, <laughs> I've been, I've uh, been, I've been at the bar, you know, and a, a girl. I'll start trying to if I start trying to talk to a girl or something. Or, so it's always that thing, right? Like you want to make some eye contact so you understand they're oh, yeah. interested. Because yeah. I'm not just gonna like, I'm I'm not a cold caller. I'm not just gonna be like uh, this giant human comes up is like sup girl yeah. it ain't gonna work for even Tiny me dick, right though, but yeah. back in my day if i looked like you i would be a fuck you you say cold call, pussy. i would be the <laughs> fucking telemarketer a fucking <laughs> pussy yeah. right door to door selling door to door uh a fucking vacuum i want to be i want to be, com- be community property <laughs> so i i've said things to girls like hey i like those heels and they go yeah they look oh, better yeah, in the air that's my line Really? I've used that. <laughs> I've said I like it those to, heels. I like those heels. She's you like, know well, where, they're, well, they're Air Force Ones. You know so. where you know where heels <laughs> look good? Soul? What are you looking at? You know where heels look good in the air. <laughs> you really said that? I've said that. Oh. But like, not oh, my, like he's not like, as the you opener. You look better on my feet. <laughs> not as the opener. I have also because <laughs> then you get my toes on. <laughs> Uh, I have said. The size of those heels. <laughs> oh, this is this is gonna get me some hate, probably. Uh, I, nobody I've watches also this. Also said uh, I like those jeans. They'd look better on my bedroom floor. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, classic I've heard that guy. Uh-huh. Uh, I have also said it would be really nice if you woke up in one of my t-shirts at my house. Mm. I've used that. That's too. pretty subtle. That's pretty subtle. No, has any of this worked? Yeah, all of it. <laughs> all right, dude, relax, relax. Oh, now I'm lying. He wants you guys want to know. Now I'm lying. Come on. Well, oh, hey, how are you? You know what? I know Eric. I'm in. Right? <laughs> oh, Works every time. Hey, what's up? What well, fuck? I, I think mean. I think the problem is I don't really think. I mean, I don't really think that much of myself. So. Like I've used those to close deals, That's but the I would never part open about it. you. That's a good part about you. I mean, I, 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 I've, I've said some ignorant shit though. I mean, I'm yeah, but I, did, but I'm like, I'm the same way. Cause I don't think anybody sees me like, Oh, that guy's hot or right. anything. But like I go to the bar and this happened to me a few weeks ago. I went to the bar and all I went by myself, you know, that's, that's my Vegas. Right. And I went and then I, I, as soon as I'm walking in, there's this lady older, a lot older and she's fucking, 60? she's fucking wasted, probably fifties, mid fifties. Yeah, there you go. And she's probably, and she's like, wasted, right? And she like gr- grabs me as I'm walking by, pets my face. She goes, "You're a little good looking guy." And I'm like, I'm like, oh, thank you. I'm like, and, and then I go, and I go, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're not, you're not too bad yourself. And then I just, you know, keep going doing my own shit. You really and said I, you're not too bad yourself? Yeah. Oh. And so I sit there. She's that's way fucking better wasted. Than, that's way better than the heel pickup line as the closer. <laughs> but right? hold on. But oh, you're not too bad she, yourself. Even though you're so wasted, you can't stand up. But she probably doesn't know what the fuck I said. But uh, but what happens is like I, I sit down and I'm looking at all the babes, right? But then I eat and then I, I drink and then I know that none of those babes, I don't have the energy to be like, Oh, let's see what's going on. You know, let's see what happens here. And then I go talk to them. But that's so why I just sit there and then I'm like, where's that drunk bitch that was? <laughs> let, me, let me go see if I can get the low hanging fruit. I'm like, you know, I'm just, don't look at the bathroom. I'm just going to come out sometime. She's going to stumble out of there sometime. Because right? I was like, at this point. <laughs> Yo, hey, Drake, can we move? Can we move over there? Because if I've been drinking, she's, she's been drinking this whole time. <laughs> she's like, she, it'll be laying there Any for me. Any port in a storm, god damn it. Where you at, sweetheart? So, as, uh, why don't you, you say you don't have the energy, but why don't you go? I kind of just feel. I kind of just wait until they give me a little, even if it's a little vibe. Well, so go, that's what oh, I'm saying. Okay. Like, 
I, I need some eye contact or something. I'm not just going to, I just, I can't do it. Like, I, I'm not as, as, as confident as I can come across or whatever my aura is or whatever. Cause I get that all the time. Like you seem like the most self-confident person. I get it a lot. Like right. people tell me a lot. Shut up. Um, this sound is so gay. Oh, <clears> my aura. Chin. Get the fuck out of well, here. Whatever it is. My energy, my vibe. <laughs> fuck you. No, I'll be, I'll be real. Do you with call you. it a vibe. I, I bet you I'm, call it a fucking vibe, huh? I'm, I'm, that lady I'm, gave me a vibe. I, I, you four year old, I'm 14 year old girl. Very happily married. Right. Yeah. But in my heyday, yeah. when I would go to the bar, I had no fucks. I never cared. And I carried that same. I, I was skinny. Mm. I was little. I didn't. I didn't care. And you know what? It worked ninety five percent of the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The less you give a shit, the the <clears throat> better it goes for you. And even when it didn't go good, and I would let her know, what well, doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just it, move on to the it's next. Funny how the the script would flip when you would go from one to the other. It's like fucking. It's like clockwork. Yeah. It's true. What are you doing out? Yeah, you two. Call me. To, you, you two ought to just ravage the. No, you know what we need to do. We all I'm need to hang good. out. With, with, with all due respect, we of your marriage. No, we're not gonna do anything bad. We need to go hang out and see who pulls more phone numbers, and then we'll burn him. You know, we're not gonna call him. Well, you guys won't burn. Well, him. I yeah. We'll we'll roll joints out of him. It's cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, they don't, they don't do papers anymore. They just put it on your yeah. phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know he's not <laughs> getting laid. <laughs> By the way, I got married when I was, you know, back in the 1970s. He's all, Somebody have a pen and paper. <laughs> he's all. Let me have this. I'm like, have this hey, can I get your number? She's so yeah. I'm like. I want to get a piece of paper. I'll be right back. <laughs> so what the fuck? Give me your phone. What the dummy. fuck, grandma? Find oh, me grandpa. on Facebook. I've I've done that. Like, Yo, just find where me on you Facebook. Listen to the yellow pages, so I can find. <laughs> uh, Remember those days? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's your beeper number? <laughs> so I I went through a period. Ooh. Um, like. I don't know before the before the last fight, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of coming into the fall where I was dating a lot. I was going out a lot. Yeah, I remember when you brought two chicks. Yeah, when we went yeah. to the fights. Yeah, this is before you beat the shit out of that kid in the fucking <laughs> crowd. Remember, you're all hey, I was drinking. I beat the fuck out of this kid. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. So by the and way, it started with I was drinking. Yeah. Yo, by the way, we're not gonna get into details about what happened to me, but I I got so much shit that night. Yeah, yeah, it's, rid it's not ridiculous. In a good way. No, oh. and I didn't do anything. Mm. I'll tell you later. But I was, I was just like, "What the fuck?" You know, oh, who maybe, I went with. Well, maybe I know why. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. but but this didn't help. It well, never does. It started with I was. It drinking. never does. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't. No, I was. Someone was giving me a hard time. Yeah, and I was like, "What the fuck are I, you talking I guess about?" I could see that. Yeah, especially when I told the told those girls, I was like, uh, "I have a, a reputation, so make sure you dress accordingly." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they did. <laughs> Shout out to one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, who are you to be choosing right now? <laughs> what? Did, who are um, you to be choosing? So, Shout out to both of them. Uh, yeah. So I I had <laughs> been dating a lot around that time, right? And then some things happened. And I was just like, I I gotta quit. I just yeah. gotta quit. Just it's you know the the quantity over quality yeah. just was too much. <clears throat> like, I had a, I had a friend. I used to <laughs> shout out to Sean. He uh, he used to tell me like he would point out like an ugly chick. Where we went. We, I used to work with him. And doing construction, you go out and you have lunch like a at a you know fast food place or whatever. And he will point to like a regular looking chick, right? Be like, oh, look at I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. And he's like, dude, he's like, you got to slay a couple of dragons to get to your princess. <laughs> um, I'm like, God damn, damn, that's fucking poetry right there. I, I, I won't say it hasn't happened to me. <laughs> oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I will say there was, there was, I got to a point in time that I was like, I started. I started, literally, just being like, "Oh, I don't care if she tells me to fuck off, because I'll just do it again, whether it's that same night or the next time I'm here." Yeah. Well, that doesn't happen to you too. Hey, fuck you, Eric. 
Go fuck yourself, dude. There's a lot of hatred coming you off piece you right of now. Shit. Why am I such a dick? <laughs> I want to know why am I such a dick? I don't know. Just why? Are you? No, you're not a dick, dude. That's the thing. You know what? You have that look when you're like, "Oh, look at this fucking guy." He's yeah, fucking, yeah. Fuck this douche. Have, and then you're like, "No, dude, he's the nicest fucking I have guy." A, I, have I have a, a, I have that face. He lays that just bike every now and then, well, but he's the nicest yeah, guy. I, mean, I, I have that face that makes me just look completely unapproachable most yeah, of the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and plus your what's wrong? Yeah. I'm, I'm fine. What, what do you mean? Yeah. And plus your height. You're full of fucking muscles and shit. Yeah, so uh, you know, on the on the other side, you, I can be almost too intimidating to approach. Like, so if a if a nice girl was somewhere, she'd be like, I don't think so. You know what yeah. I mean? Because you can go too far both ways. I I'm I think I'm reaching the Dude, the majority of the people that I've talked to and they, they girls that I'm like, oh, what about this? And there's like that one guy that is either a bodybuilder or whatever. And they're like, ew, that's gross. I'm like. Is that a new thing nowadays? Just people, just girls don't like that shit. So, is I've, dad bots a thing? Because I'm, well, I, I should be killing it. You know what I have been told? It's just uh, called bod with you, not dad. Bod. You know what I've been told? Hey, well, I like kind that. of, <laughs> kind Mine of is a fat lot. bod. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> I said it. So if if I am dating right, and um, what I've been told a lot is that they feel like. Um, guys are very soft, not necessarily physical, but mentally, um, they won't make a decision. They won't, you know, they just things like that. Right. I get, so I'm like, okay, if you'd like to go out Saturday night, tell me, do you want me to pick you up or do you want me to meet you? Because I actually haven't been out on a second date in quite a while. <laughs> like oh, I've gone out, oh, I've gone out on God a date, and then I'm like, I just can't do it for you or her. Is it you on you that like, I don't want to go out with them again? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't feel bad for you then. No, I'm choosing. No, I was just saying, like you're like, oh, I really enjoyed myself, and then she doesn't call you. You're like, oh. no, I, I, you know, hey, Kane, want to go get some food? <laughs> Want to go, go out work out? Want to go work well, out? I, uh, <laughs> you, you guys are going to fucking Want to go get a me. cup of coffee? I, 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 <laughs> Starbucks? I stopped sleeping around, believe it or not, um, And I, but I've been on a series of single dates, and I just, I, like, I got really critical about what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'd be like, okay, do you want, you know, I get it, I'm, you know, I'd meet you somewhere, you don't really know me, whatever it is, do you want me to pick you up at your house do you want me to or do you want to meet me what what makes you comfortable yeah. right <clears throat> but i'm i'm not letting him pick the restaurant and shit i'm just yeah. because i'm not going back and forth on this never ending fucking bullshit okay I, i'll pick a decent restaurant i don't mind paying i would much rather pay for 50 dinners than get that you s- like <laughs> yeah especially if I'm paying. <laughs> but i'd rather pay for 50 dinners and not get strapped down with another you know fucking party woohoo girl yeah because I, I i just can't do that either they're everywhere out there aren't they I, let's go Where? get fucked up eight nights a week i so what what does your life look like i'd like i'm the I, I, I was watching the fights a couple of weeks ago. I was sitting on my couch. I was sitting by myself. Nobody there. I wasn't drinking. Something, I was talking back and forth with uh, uh, a friend of mine from high school. And he's like, who are you with? Nobody. What you drinking? Nothing. He's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> like nobody? Yeah, fucking nobody. Eric fucking Iman. All calm down. Docile. <clears throat> All right, I wouldn't go that far because I'll still I'll still <clears throat> fuck a motherfucker up in the stands at Fierce Fighting if they get out of fucking line. You know? <laughs> Shut out, right? <clears throat> hey, Yo, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. Better be. So, uh, just to get just so people know, I mean, to get tickets, are we still just going to the website and clicking on you or click on me? The website, I actually have the link. I'll send you the link if you nice. want to tag it. Um, the the poster they did for me has a QR code in the top mm. corner, so there. Um, tickets, I think, start at forty six ish dollars. Um, I have some table t- uh, tickets. If you want to buy them from me, I bought uh, I bought a table. Um, I have a few left. If you want to buy them from me, um, 
if you need help figuring out how to get tickets, call, message me on one of the social things. Um, it's May 31st, last day of May, uh, heavyweight title, five round fight. Jared, Friday night. Friday night. <clears throat> Not, I don't, yeah, I wish it was Saturday. Uh, Can't get yeah. past it, but um, Friday night will do. I'm even going to take the day off, which taking the last day off of the month is kind of sacrilege. Mm. But So the last fight, me and Kane are, Kane, I make Kane fucking drive me around and shit, right? Like he <laughs> chauffeurs me. And uh, we're driving down, and I usually get a room um, down there because yeah. it's just easy, right? So I'll get a room right across from the Maverick Center. Um, I eat my pre-fight meal. I like to eat around two. Um, and I, I, I just eat enough to where I don't want to be miserable, but really by fight time, I want to be hungry. Mm -hmm. Um, because I don't want to feel full. I don't want to feel slow. So that last one, <clears throat> what's your pre-fight meal? Uh, last time we ate Thai food. Um, some I spitting. Some, I ate some pad thai Ooh, and, wow. some, uh, and some spring roll. Um, well, well, we're going to have to <laughs> cancel him before yeah. his hey, fight. Hey, you can say spring roll. <clears throat> <laughs> what do you do? What do you mean? <laughs> you, you, yeah, it's, not, I... it's R, not a wool. <laughs> what? what? Are you saying I said it some kind of way? Oh, well. Uh, yeah. uh, Maybe you'll be drinking. Oh, wait. You haven't been. I have not been drinking. <laughs> I haven't so, been so, so, some, so some Thai food. <laughs> Spring woes. Hey, where's the... Uh, Why would you say it like that? Hey, I'm just repeating what you said. I did. I did. Maybe, <laughs> I, maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong about Thai food. Maybe it's pronounced some other way. But Eric Hyman, so it I is. go and I ask him, hey, can I get some spring wools? I just... <laughs> Good I, <fucking>. just <laughs> <laughs> I just want somebody to recognize how uh, Justin said smother way. <laughs> He obviously has an enunciation <laughs> issue. Maybe they pronounce it just some said. other way. <laughs> has nothing to do with me. My affiliation. He says, to, hey, what is this? Some other so way. <laughs> Smother? He missed it, which I'm glad he did. <laughs> hey, uh, where's the fucking after party going to be? Um, after you, you win Where the do time. you want it? Well, the last time we did it at the, yeah. it's not the puck anymore. It's the, the break. The break. The what? The break. The break. Okay. Um... Do you want to do it there again? Sure. Would you like to go somewhere else? I'll give you guys the option. Is there somewhere close? I like the fact that it's close. I like the fact yeah. that I can walk, and sh if I need to wash the blood off me, I can go to the, uh, I can go to my room. Yeah. And then rinse off real quick, which is what I did last time, and then straight over. This Here's where I'm in a tough nice. one. <clears throat> Obviously, I have a a daughter that is in. Thank God. For me, that she is into what her dad's into, right? Sure. She wants to go to the fights. So oh, I think damn. That's put a, you should do it, though. Put a hindrance up, of course. Of course, yeah. for her. I, I yeah. Well, well, you get shit face there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, make the wife drive. <laughs> but she will. Well, the daughter will drive, right? Oh. Make the nine-year-old yeah, drive. <laughs> Why not? Why not? No, that, but that would be great, right? Uh, yeah. Somebody you guys are friends with, somebody, you know. I, I I love that. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's give all the info before we leave then. Uh, May 31st, Maverick Center. I am fighting Jared Vendera for the... UFC vet. UFC vet. UFC V vet. for Vendera. <laughs> Whatever his name is. Vendera. <clears throat> Yo, so With what do you... Uh, before we wrap this up, I mean, I, I just want to dig into this a little bit. What do you expect from him? I mean, he had a great showing against Kent, right? He... he um, he was very patient against Kent. Yeah. He traded with Kent a little bit. He was really smart about kind of sucking Kent into his game. Um, I, <clears throat> I have a coach that thinks he's going to stand up with me. And then I have a coach, obviously Fabio's like, he's going to try to take you down. Um, so I'm working both a lot. Um, I think my takedown defense is about as good as in, in at least locally in the heavyweight division as anybody. Um, Yo, your last fight, you showed outstanding yeah. takedown defense. Well, especially so, up against the cage. So these guys, I think, have very similar skill sets, mm -hmm. right? Um, obviously, I think Bandera has a higher level. Um, you know, that's how he's gotten into the UFC. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but they're, they're, I, it, I would think their game plan would be similar. Right. right. And it was funny because even backstage with that last fight, I, I was talking to, to Fabio and I was like, he's going to fucking trip me. 
He's going to come out and try to trip me. He's not going to shoot. Nobody's going to want to shoot on me because they don't want me to land on him, right? So it's either a trip or they're going to put me against the cage and try to work it from there. So, and he came out and fucking tripped me. (laughs) Um, So I, obviously I'm not going to make that mistake again, but um, I, my feeling would be if he does come out and exchange, I'm going to touch him and I'm going to hit him. And then he's probably, usually what happens is if they think they're going to exchange with me, I catch him and it's, it's, even if it's not hard enough to really hurt them, it's hard enough to it's make them shit make sure they don't want that to fucking happen yeah. to them again, right? And then they put me against the cage, and then we go from there. Um, it, you know, also funny, me and Fabio were talking backstage or back in the dressing room, and um, he was like, okay, hey, he's going to break from you when he can't take you down, and his hands are going to be down. And It was perfect. It was, it was perfect. fucking And I hit him money. fucking hard. Um, this guy has more experience. Yeah. He's a little bit bigger. Uh, I, I think he weighed, I think against Kent, he was right around 240. Um, he's, he's like, uh, what, 13 and, and 11, right? He's had a lot of fights. He's had a lot of fights. He's got experience. <clears throat> so, you know, and I'm kind of the, that guy here in the heavyweight yeah, absolutely. division. So, um, <clears throat> I, I, th- I, I think he's going to put try to put me against the cage and, and wear me down. Um, but my, my I mean, we work my cage defense every day. So, and I've got some pretty good heavyweights. Um, and I've, I've never been in the cage where I've been as tired as I have been in the gym. Ever. Not even the times I went the distance. Never. Like, conditioning was never a problem. It feels like it's taking longer to get my conditioning back. But, like, this week, all of a sudden, I'm turning the corner, and I'm like, now it's time we're going, right? And, like, the getting in shape part is over. Now I'm in shape. I can fight my five rounds at a good pace, and I don't feel good. You know, I don't feel like death after I'm sore all the time, but wrestling, you know, wrestling does that to me anyway. So, um, Uh, yeah, I, you know, and I, I, I meant to, uh, watch the damage plan, um, podcast that he was on. And I, you know, I, I saw some of the clips and he said, you know, I, I think Eric's basically, he's like, Eric's not a bad fighter and stuff like that, but I want to get to the UFC. Well, the difference is I only want his fucking belt. There's nothing past this for me. Eric gets the belt. <clears throat> we're going to Sicily. What are we doing? Yeah. What? Because Kent's right there, right? Yeah. I'm done. I vacate. Did they know that? Yep. Yep. I, to- I told Zach, okay. Uh, he- Zach's like, you know, you're coming off a win. You've- he's- he- and he, t- he was not, yeah, you know, he's-, he's selling me the fight. But he's like, you have a little more experience than all the other heavyweights in the state. Um, I think Kent's will be, I mean, Kent looked stellar in his last fight with that guy. I mean, stellar, right? I think, I, I honestly think that if Kent fought Vandera again, Kent would win. Right. I do. I do. I think that he just made a tactical error. Um, and it happens. And sometimes you're in the back, you know, you're, you're getting warmed up and shit and it just ain't coming together. And, and, and you, the bad thing is it's almost like you know it. You're like, God, it just isn't clicking, right? And you can't say why. You don't know why. Sometimes you go into the cage and it comes together. Sometimes it doesn't. Like when I fought um, Cavender, I was in the back and I was like, it's, I, what the fuck? Something doesn't feel right. What the fuck, right? I'm thinking in my mind, like, <clears throat> why, why do I just not feel like it's all flowing the way that it should? And then got in the cage, the door shut. It never got better. It just never came together for me. Like to where I felt like I was working anything that I worked in the gym. I mean, I defended the takedown again against Cavender really well. I got cocky and waved him on, which I've never done. Just, just not. Everything just went out the window. I don't know why. I don't know why. Right. Don't know why. Um, and it happens, you know, it happens. So I, I, I've sparred with Kent a bunch. Kent is a stud. He is a stud and he, he will go far. And I thought he looked super good against that guy, especially when you looked at the last guy he fought and you're like, 
what the hell is this guy going to do? And then the guy was moving in and out and I actually said it on the broadcast. They were like, well, Kent's having fine with a uh, problem with the range. I said, no, he's not. He's having a problem with that guy's speed because his in and out speed was very quick, especially considering his body type. Right. And then second round, the guy came out was looked like he was visibly gassing a little bit and Kent caught him with that front kick and yeah. just blah, tore him out. So, you know, I thought Kent looked, awesome back to form uh looked like he caught some big shots didn't seem to phase him he was very patient he didn't get into you know any wild exchanges with the guy which i've been prone to do um so uh, you know i think i think ken will be back um but yeah they know I, this is it for me <clears throat> i it fighting's a perishable skill uh, i'm 45 years old <laughs> you know vander is 10 years younger than me one isn't he thought he was 34 but i could be wrong um he's born in 91 so I, yeah i guess you're right yeah so uh you know young young guy he's trying to get back to the ufc and the difference is i only want his fucking belt i don't have anything past this well we're taking it bringing it back we're bringing it back to utah oh, he's yeah, a california guy isn't he? he is he's <clears> i will california. say team quest guy it's kind of my yeah, I ride and die yeah. for Team Quest, but <laughs> <laughs> only, only, <clears throat> only because I, I mean, my, my man crush is Dan Henderson. Oh yeah, stud, right? And Eric Iman, obviously. <clears throat> well, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. a close second He's to Dan fucking right wing, right? <laughs> no, it's gonna be great. I'm excited. Like, so, why am I interviewing this motherfucker? Well, we'll be the podcast because well, he's not. We're not interviewing. He's fucking Eric Iman, dude. Eric fucking Iman. Eric fucking Iman. Still very docile. <laughs> Well, so if you believe me, May thirty first, Friday, May thirty first. Yeah, get your tickets. Get a hold of you. You can if you can't figure it out. Uh, send a carrier pigeon. I'll get a hold of you. I I would really like this to be the send off that I want. Yeah. Um. You know, I would love to walk out to a bunch of cheering. Yeah. So, I'm gonna have to walk out first because he's the champ. We so. have we have we have friends coming with us. Today. Awesome. Yeah, we got to we have, we'll have a whole. <clears throat> I want it to. I would really like it to blow up when I walk out. Why are you walking out to? Uh, I was thinking about going back out to the Iron Man because it's been the staple for most. What's of the one you put it that I told you? Sabotage. You... Listen, because you can't, y'all. you it's... won't, and you don't stop. I was like, oh, hey, dude, you have to do that. You sure know a shot. You know, yeah, yeah. Don't with the rock of the sure shot. Sure shot. You know a DJ. Why don't you have him mix him? You all, you know the same DJ. I fucking, you know. I don't he probably know. likes I don't know you that better. guy. <laughs> I don't know. He used to call me all the time. Now we're on the app. He used to call me on my cell phone. Yeah. All right. Well, this is your camera. Tell everybody where they can find you. Find tickets. Find your OnlyFans. Uh, find me, Eric Iman, on uh, Facebook. Silverback Muay Thai on IG. Um, just send me a like. I'll follow you back if you're not a weirdo or look like a weirdo. Um, Buy tickets uh, if you go to fiercefightingchampionship.com and click on the top right corner that says events. Go down to uh, the, the next event coming up, 31, and click on my lovely face. Co-main event. Co-main. Nice. Which is, I, I thought I was going to be the main. I, I, have, I find it odd that the heavyweights aren't the main, but... <clears throat> Haro's a that hey yo that and, main event Ooh. and and Sear oh. uh, so I went up to I went up to Idaho and watched him fight right and I was like and you know the guy coming out of Vegas and stuff I was like man that guy's a stud though like looking at his record and stuff and Sear came out and just looked phenomenal mm. <laughs> looked phenomenal so and Joel looked just as good in his last fight so that main event fight uh, it's the whole cards be, it's a yeah. stat card yeah. it's a good card. So. Yeah, there and if you go to the the Challenger series cards for these that are yeah. great fights. I mean there's there's Zach has just done a great job with his team and matchmaking. I I have not seen a boring fight. Yeah. You know. No, I got something good fight. here. You got something good here in Utah. Thank and God. Thank God. Again, it sucks that we can fill the crowd for UFC and you talk I was thinking about this the other day. You talk to these guys, you know, you what are you doing? Oh, I watch the fights. So you watch them? Yeah, I, I watch them all. So who's coming out of your state yeah. that has an opportunity to do that? Do you know who that is? 
right? <clears throat> I mean, you one guys out of, do one out of, one out of ten, right? Yeah, but so we exactly. have we have some guys right now that are uh, you know one or two fights away Absolutely. from going to the UFC, <clears throat> going to the PFL. You know what I mean? Like yeah. two fights away, yeah. like some killers. Like you look at Mike Jones last last outing oh, when he starts yeah. that kid. Yeah. Mike could go to PFL now. You know what I mean? Kent was just a couple of fights away. I think one or two fights away. Joel, same thing. <clears throat> I mean, Carmen went, Carmen could go back anytime. I mean, yeah. like s- support. I, I put this on my, my last gym post and I was like, you know, this is like supporting a small business. Yeah, absolutely. So support your local people. Yeah. Right. Support your community. Go buy some tickets. It's and it's a great time too. Yeah. And it, and it may sound like a bold statement. I'll be willing to say that you go to any of these good local shows like a fierce. The fights are better I, than the pros. People get so cautious. More exciting. People get so cautious when losing. they make it to the build, yep. big leagues of losing, where these guys are so fucking hungry yeah. to just make it. And those are the best fights. Yeah, absolutely. Bar none. You were going to get finishes. You're, you're, nobody gives a shit. It's good no. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so if you call yourself a fight fan, you should probably at least take the time to know the guys that are working towards that now. Now, me, I'm not. I'm out after this, but I'm going to retire as the fucking champion. <laughs> come come see the other side of the beehive, huh? Hey. Yeah. What? Just you and me. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, I forgot about that. You can find Justin Simmons at uh, MySpace slash Justin Simmons. <laughs> Right. No, I've grown up a lot. I've grown up a lot since oh, I've been right. here. That's oh. right. Uh, if you want to find me on the uh, the Instagram, it's J underscore Sims sixty eight. <laughs> I got rid of the long balls on those Mexican supplements. There, back up me in now. Right? Yes, no more long balls. High and tight. But uh, hey, thanks for having me. Hey, um, can I say it here? Three hundred. Yeah, for sure. You have to. You must. Okay. I'll be back on 300. Hell yeah. 300, 300. And then we'll call it and I quit. We'll burn this fucking studio. To the we'll ground. Go. Hell yeah. No, I was going to say this looks good, dude. Uh, what I you're putting on here, I'm too. very impressed. I'm, I'm excited that you kind of took the the bull by the horns. I can obviously tell that uh, selling swag on the beach for um, <laughs> for uh, Jimmy Puka Buffett. Shelf. Jimmy Buffett has been well for hey, you, dude. right? <laughs> right. I'm glad that you can keep this alive, right? Hey, fuck you, Justin. I, what is I, can't, this? I can't tell yeah, you this really? in the office, but go fuck it. I'm the cup time now. All right, motherfucker. <laughs> so, this, you is can, <laughs> this is my This is my you can catch the show How Did It Get So Good on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can find me and Angel Cervera on Instagram, Angel Cervera on Facebook. That's my last name, C-E-R-V-E-R-A. And thank you so much, fellas. Thanks for having me again. We'll see you I on the 31st. It. We'll see you on the 31st. See you on Monday. <laughs> and on the 300. Yeah. 300. This is Bardo. Hey, I, take care uh, of yourself. I really appreciate your guys' support over the years, too, a lot. And I appreciate your friendship. Yeah, for sure. We love you. <clears throat> oh, we're friends again, huh? Not you. All of a sudden, yeah. you're, All right, well. you're being a dick. We love you, Eric. And uh, we'll be there. And after you win, we're going to Sizzler. I fucking, I love the Sizz, huh, man? Fuck yeah. Oh, you can eat shrimp? Yeah. yeah. Fuck Oops. yeah, dude. That. This has been How Did It Get So Good? Thank you. Peace. <laughs> ah, yes.